It certainly is what we're going to be focusing in on for a bit now as numbers of active COVID-19 cases show a significant drop nationally. The Gauteng Health Department is concerned about a 6% increase since the country moved to level one lockdown. Just last week, the province recorded around 1,700 new cases. Authorities are encouraging the public to continue adhering to health protocols as the lack of social distancing and not wearing masks have been attributed to the increase. So to talk to us a little bit more about this is Acting Health MEC in the province, Jacob Mamabolo. Uh, MEC, good to have you. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning to you, to all the viewers, and thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. So you are raising the alarm bells just to sort of say, hang on a second, Gauteng, we're a little worried about the 6% increase. I is this significant enough to be concerned? Level one, people are out and about. I mean, 6% increase, is that a little worrying for you? Well, the, uh, yeah, so let me acknowledge that uh, we do have what I call a, a figure or a number of interest, which means we're looking at it and monitoring it. But uh, its significance level really can be seen from the point that uh, for as long as it is below 10%, um, it shouldn't be much of a concern because it's still relatively under good control. However, we shouldn't wait for it to reach that point. We should at the earliest possible uh, period, uh, at the possible period, uh, po uh, earliest possible period, raise the alarms and the concerns so that we can um, appeal to the people and raise their alertedness uh, with respect to the fact that we need to maintain uh, the basic protocols uh, and of course keep to basic health and hygiene. Mm -hmm. And we are of course, as a province of Gauteng, facing a unique challenge and that is when alert levels are, are uh, downgraded or there are more uh, strict level, uh, the strictness of the, of the lockdown is relaxed. With us in Gauteng, it poses a greater challenge that nobody else faces because we are the leading economy of the country. And therefore, that is why more activities will pose a challenge to us. So to that extent, uh, controlling the numbers and sticking to the protocols is a function of the behavior and conduct attitude of people. Yeah, yeah. And that is why we continue to, to appeal that the people must remain consistent with those best practices that helped us to move from planet level five to where we are now. It certainly is. And I mean, we sort of living in Johannesburg, in the Gauteng area, you know, we, we, we bear witness to a lot of people and their behavior. And, you know, some of the things that you're talking to are not being adhered to, particularly when you're going out uh, to the restaurants, to the, the bars, and uh, some people not adhering to the curfew, some people not adhering to wearing of masks. And this being a big concern because, you know, as a province, are you seeing certain pockets of, uh, big infections that are taking place, areas that are of concern? Yes, just before I come to that, let me pick up on the point you're making because it's quite important. Uh, we, we're seeing the drop levels in the level of discipline required uh, to stick to the protocols. For example, it is really worrying that you see people not wearing masks but even others hanging them on their necks. Instead of wearing them as prescribed, uh, we're seeing a, a very worrying level of um, actually ill discipline and inconsistent conduct with respect to the wearing of the masks. Uh, people engaged in social activities, let's take, for example, going to restaurants, as you say, drinking. And remember, for every intake of alcohol, the uh, level of alertedness and consciousness also drops. So there's a, there's, a, there's a very interesting relationship between as much as you consume and your level of alertedness, and people tend to trust. We also have people who are positive but don't show symptoms. And you can imagine in a family setting where, again, or a workplace where workers are used to each other and are trusting each other, and then they don't do social distancing. That is also another big issue. The cluster of funerals as social activities, malls, that is also a very worrying phenomenon to us. So, but 
Um, we are quite confident that um, we should be able to see uh, an improvement. The areas of worry remain the city of Joburg, yeah. the inner city, Ramfontein, Soweto. Um, in in Sidibeng, uh, it's concentrated around um, Mfuleni in the city of Tswani. The hotspots remain at Redville, um, uh, Soshangube, uh, those areas around Mabopani, uh, the CBD of the city of Tswani is of great concern to us. Uh, in Ikuruleni, not so much. Uh, I think we can we can we can sit a little bit comfortably with that. But these areas in Swani, in Jobek, in the city in Ikuruleni, Mfuleni, those are the areas with a high concentration of risky behavior. And our teams on the ground are out in full force to crack reckless and re uh, risky behavior. And that's why I would want to appeal to every person. Okay. One person not wearing a mask, one person not adhering can actually change the situation in the whole township, in the whole uh, residential area. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's why every person must stick to the protocols. Um, MEC, while I've got you on, on, on the line, and I do, I do think that the, the, the advice that you've given to Gautengers and people living in the province applies to everybody around the country. But I have to talk to you about what is happening within the province of Gauteng and the, the whole issue and investigation around the PPE scandal. There's been a call, and this particularly after results or, or reports coming out from the SIU investigation that is implicating the head of the uh, health here in the province, Professor Mkululi uh, Lukele, that this uh, individual must be asked to step down and be suspended pending this investigation. May I ask, is he still in this position? We spoke to the SIU yesterday. They said he is still in the position as the head of health in the province. Is he still in this position? And why is he not suspended pending the investigation? Well, firstly, let me confirm that, uh, you know, Premier David Makura and, of course, like the president, uh, have all said we will act on these matters without fear or favor. But uh, remember, and I think the listeners will agree, in dealing with this type of matters, once you receive a report, you have to look at it and then say, what in law can you do and not do within a certain limited, at, I mean, within a certain space of time? And that is why the Premier having uh, studied the report, having looked at it, I can assure you, you will hear very soon and I know that uh, I could get into what does, what, when, when does very soon start and end, a proper announcement that complies with all the prescripts and laws will be made. And uh, I'll, I'll really appeal with you that um, uh, allow the provincial government to make an announcement on this matter. We have proven beyond any doubt that we deal with this matters decisively and without fear of favor prejudice. And I can assure you that's exactly the announcement that will be made. And I would like you to allow the Premier to do that. Yeah, certainly, I, I, we will allow the, the Premier that time. But at the same time, I think uh, a lot of the public won't agree with you because they want to see things being done and they don't want to see people that are being implicated in any form of corruption in a very powerful position. I mean, 700 companies being investigated, uh, perhaps 2 billion rand in a PPE scandal that is under investigation for this province. This is a big worry and we have seen a lot of health workers die due to this scandal. You are in this acting position purely because the person in this position has been suspended suspended due to investigations. Um, surely this should apply to the head of health. Um, <clears throat> let me say that, uh, and just as a matter of emphasis, I think in this province, we have done exceptionally well at every given point to announce the next critical step. We have said matters that pertain to um, a violation of supply chain procedures and, and laws and prescripts are referred to the SIU. I can confirm the SIU has came back to us and has enabled us a report. And we are, I think, um, on record having, in all cases, done what has to be done and we have not been found to be wanting under any circumstance. I am assuring you that we will make an announcement and that announcement will be made exactly as we always do. And we have never failed to give the public status and the update on where we are 
that will be done and it's a matter of a uh, short time it will be done where well, we've been doing that i'm appealing just give us a little space we will do that we have been doing very well on these matters we have never at any time uh, failed to do what we have to do and i'm just saying it's a matter of time an announcement will be made and i'm i'm really appealing that let's stick to that an announcement will be all right, MEC, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for talking to us here on the program. Um, that is uh, Jacob Mamabolo, the acting MEC for Health here in Gauteng, uh, talking to us among other issues uh, pertaining to investigations into the uh, department, the Gauteng Health Department and uh, uh, the PPE scandal, but also talking to a 6% increase in coronavirus infections and uh, just putting a big warning out there to those that are not abiding by those protocols that have been put in place. All right, let's quickly have